So, uh, welcome. <laughs> My name is uh, Mahmoud Abdelghani, and uh, I'd like to tell you some stuff yeah, that I learned uh, during my uh, hobby project of uh, porting Doom to Java. Um, I'm very proud of this thing, so uh, I'm gonna sh I keep showing it so because, yeah. Anyways, anybody know what this is, actually? Anybody? Yeah. Sorry? I heard somebody saying yes. But okay, it doesn't matter, doesn't matter. Uh, yeah, so um, it's a bit difficult to start a presentation. To me, at least, it's difficult because uh, I, I never know what to talk about. So, uh, and this one, I'm going to do like an intro that's kind of un it's it's kind of related. It's not 100% related, but we will see. Um, so yeah, so it company, uh, it software. There's a the company that created Doom. Cool company, a lot of cool stuff. Doom, Wolf, Rage, Quake, whatever. Um, but the, the coolest thing they did, uh, to me at least, and to a lot of people, is they open sourced everything, right? Uh, almost everything. Uh, which is pretty cool, right? Because not a lot of companies that make like AAA games open source their games. Most of them, I think they're ashamed to show their source code or something. Um, but it's pretty cool, right? So people hack their games, they modify their games, and like me, right? And that's just amazing. You learn a lot of stuff from that source code. Pretty smart people. So uh, cool stuff. Um, um, the nerd rage anecdote. Okay, let me tell that as well. Um, so nerd rage anecdote is about when Doom got open sourced, uh, the original Doom, got open sourced in the late '90s. Again, this story has nothing nothing to do with me, but it's a pretty cool story, right? Because my stuff, what I'm going to show after this slide, is kind of boring. So I have to start with something interesting, right? Uh, so the, when the original Doom got open sourced, uh, people went through the source code, and they found one piece of code, uh, which is this piece of code, um, specifically this loop. Uh, this piece of code is used every time you try to load anything in the game, like a picture, a sound, a map, anything that isn't source code gets loaded through this thing. And as you can see, it just does like a linear search, right? Every time, every time you call it. So this caught the eye of a lot of people, and they thought, no, this is retarded. Why are you guys doing this, right? It's like every computer science 101 student knows, no. You put this, you load it once, you put it in a hash table, and then you just do a lookup, and voila, you have 01 uh, access time, right? And it became a heated discussion, which I've never been able to find. So if anybody manages to find it, please send it to me. This is from the 90s, so news groups or whatever, right? Um, and the guys that did Doom, right, they weren't very nice either, right? No, they were nice, but they were very outspoken, so they reacted very harshly. We were actually know what we're doing, right? Uh, you guys are stupid. No, you guys are stupid. No, you are stupid. Uh, um, after a couple of years, somebody did analysis, right? So was their solution actually, was, was this actually a bottleneck, right? And it turns out it's not a bottleneck at all, right? So this, in this, these five lines of codes are a bottleneck for these five lines of code. But when you look at the big picture where this is used, right, you load a level, for example, and the level loading takes like, I don't know, a minute, right? If you optimize this part into a hash table, it will still be a minute or be 59 seconds maybe, right? But instead, and we're talking about the 90s, right? Instead, you use like two times more memory, for example, right? I don't remember the exact figures, right? And memory was very expensive then, it wasn't cheap, it wasn't easy. So, yeah, they actually were kind of right, right? Because those guys were uneducated, that's actually kind of wrong, right? But, but they weren't educated like most of us, right? From college and whatever, and we learned that stupid stuff. They just tried it out, and it worked, right? And their solution was actually the best solution because it worked. And I love that story, like I said, and it has absolutely nothing to do with me. I just wasted four minutes on it. Um, but a side note, so this page, I copied it from this book, Black, uh, the Black Book for, of Doom. It's a pretty cool book, came out last year. You can find it on Amazon. You can also download it for free, uh, legally. Yeah. So check it out. It's a pretty cool book. Um, so yeah, so my, my thing, Joom, that's the name of my project because we're excellent at naming things, right? Um, it's just fun, right? I've been working on it for a long time now, for four years, I think, or maybe it's just like longer or shorter. I honestly don't remember. It's just fun. And people always ask me when I do this presentation, so why did you start this project? And the honest answer is I don't remember. And, and it's not really and because a lot of people think I'm making fun of them when I say it, but I honestly don't remember why exactly I started the project. I have some idea about why I started the project, 
But I don't remember the reason that led me to, to do this. Uh, and it's fun, and I can't stop, and, and I'm an addict, I think, or something like that. So, so the, the idea behind this intro um, is to give you like a background about um, game development is usually seen as something that's very glamorous, right? It's something that is fun, right? And our jobs are boring, uh, which might be true, I don't know. But there's a lot of, there's a very ugly side of game development, right? And that's what I came across when I was doing this project. And that's what I'm mostly going to be talking about. So I'm kind of easing you in. Right? It's like the rest of the talk isn't as interesting as this slide. And this is the table because yeah, it's just cool to have a table. So my disclaimer, um, I'm not an expert, obviously. Right? Uh, I didn't work on the original Doom. I'm not a Java expert, I'm not a C++ expert. Um, what else? I'm not an expert at a lot of things. So everything I tell you, so, so some stuff I, may, I might tell you is, you might not even believe it, actually. Just go try it out. Um, but, but really try it out. Don't just believe anything I say without trying it out. Because maybe some stuff has been fixed or it's different or I'm just lying, right? Um, so the way the, uh, the talk is kind of structured is, uh, like I said, this is a port from C++, the C++ version of the game to Java, right? And C++ is a cool language. Everybody hates it, but it's a cool language, right? Java is a cool language. Some other people hate it, right? JavaScript, JavaScript, right? <laughs> so, uh, so, so this, this first part is more about, right, so stuff that I saw in the C++ code. It was pretty cool, pretty amazing to do. And it was like hell to do it in Java, or it doesn't exist in Java, and some stuff is even impossible in Java, right? Um, so that's, that's this. And be honest, for the people who don't know him, he's like the James Gosling of C++, but less nice, right? So, uh, so yeah. Um, so the first thing I'm going to talk about is overloading or operator overloading. And I always change this picture because you can find so many beautiful pictures about the ingenuity of the humankind, right? Yeah, but whatever. So, uh, so anyways, so operator overloading. Um, I just put this slide in this morning because I always forget to explain actually what operator overloading is because a lot of people don't know what it is because we never have it in Java and we will never have it in Java and that kind of stuff. Uh, but in other languages, such as C++, when you define an object, you can say to yourself, okay, so this is a mathematical object, right? And I want to be able to add it to itself or add it to something else. Like this, this example, this is a vector, right? So how would you do that? In other languages, you can just say, okay, so the operator plus, which is the operator plus, right? If I use it, uh, do I have, uh, yeah, here. If I use it with this type, do this operation, and that's it. And that's operator overloading, which is amazing, and it's awesome. And most of us don't need it, I know, but if you do a lot of math intensive stuff, you really do need it, and yeah. So, um, and, and the funny thing is, so, so this, uh, this excerpt is from a paper uh, Guy Steele wrote a long time ago. Um, he was one of the original architects of Java, I think. He was a cool guy, I don't remember what, he, yeah, whatever, but it's a pretty cool paper. Uh, and one of the things he was talking about is, yeah, we, we, need, we, we want operator overloading, let's put it in there. And this paper is, I think, from 96 or 95 or something like that. It never happened. And I think most of you don't even know who Guy still is, but he was 20 years ago, he was pretty well known. So I don't know what happened to him. Kidnapped, maybe, because of operator overloading. Um, but to give you a little small example, right? Um, so this, this is a simple, okay, it's not simple, but this is just an example from the source code. This is the C++ version of this, I don't remember what this does, something physics, right? Um, how would you do, do this in Java without being able to do operator overloading? And the answer is, of course, you make methods of everything because that's how we do it, right? And that's how big decimal does it. That's how the other one, big int, I think, does it. And it looks right. And actually, it looks, to me, it looks like shit. But, you know, I, th I mean, it, it looks like, like it's correct, at least, right? But this specific line, actually, because that's why I chose it, of course, it had a bug, and this was the bug the one I highlighted in red, right? I just had one bracket that was too far, right? And that gives you, to you an entirely different answer. Um, so, and does that matter? Yeah, of course it matters. This is math, right? And math is awesome, right? But this is just math, right? So, and here the, the operator precedence becomes something entirely different. Uh, a kind of simplified version of this. It's, it's kind of annoying, I have to do this, but... Uh, so take this, right? You do A, to A plus B times C, right? So 
How would you write that with methods? You would write something like this. Is this correct? Absolutely not, right? Why would I show it if it was correct, right? This is the actual, this is what actually happens, right? Because you have operator precedence, right? A multiplication comes before an addition or a subtraction, whatever, right? So this is what you should actually do, right? But yeah, you write it like this, or I wrote it like that, right? And it's just, yeah, it's difficult, right? Um, so yeah, that, that, that's really the number one cause of bugs and number one cause of pain in, in my whole thing, right? So that's why I talk about it for like, I don't know, five minutes. This operator, amazing operator. Uh, the second one is an unsigned primitive, right? Um, and without going, you know, without talking about it for too long, right? The whole idea behind an unsigned primitive is you only have a positive range of, of, an, of a number, right? You have a number that can be zero or positive. You can, it doesn't have a negative range, right? Why is that useful? Well, I mean, kind of life works that way, right? You can have a negative age, for one thing, right? And it's, it's just, it's logical to me, right? That's on the one side. On the other side, right, an unsigned int has a longer range, has a bigger range, right? So an unsigned int, for example, has the positive range of a signed long. If you, you know, so then that's cool, right? Um, what's next? Oh yeah, so this is a side effect because we don't have unsigned uh, primitives in Java, right? Both of these lines are valid Java code, right? This will 100% compile. It's weird, but it will compile. The first one won't run, right? It will give you, I don't know, uh, something, runtime exception. Um, but the second one will actually run, right? And date class is fucked up, nobody should use it, I know, but it runs. And this is the one of the very few things in the date class that isn't deprecated. And this is actually wrong, because minus one, I don't remember what it does, but it doesn't go back in time as it's supposed to. Yeah, it's uh, because zero should be 1970, right? Epoch time, and this does, or Unix time, and this does something weird. Um, but yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, like I said, this is, most of the stuff isn't really interesting if, if you haven't done something like this, right? We don't care about this in enterprise applications because we only care about, I don't know, what do we care about? Dependency injection and microservices and whatever, okay, stupid stuff, right? Um, and this is a simple experiment I did because, you know, if, if I need an unsigned int, what do I do? I use a long and be very careful, right? And that kind of stuff. So I did like a micro benchmark. I picked the worst results, right? Because everybody does this. I just, I'm honest about it, right? Because it's not always, I don't always get these results. Sometimes a long would be faster than int, right? I don't care why it's faster, right? It doesn't prove my point. I care why it's slower. So this is, right, the worst result. But the point of it is, it's not always as, as simple as you might think, right? It's like when people talk about using an int and an integer and boxing and unboxing is just cheap and whatever. No, really, it's not as cheap as you might think, right? But yeah, sure. Like I said, don't believe me. Try it out. Try it out. Try it out. Um, yeah. So uh, C++ has very, very, very nice immutability out of the box. Uh, does anybody here do C++? Anybody? The one guy? Thank you. Two guys, three guys, four guys, yes, five, five, six. That's actually more. Usually it's just one guy. And he keeps looking at me very mean about everything I say because C++ has a lot of loopholes, right? Um, but basically the idea behind C++ or the loophole in C++ is anything you can do, you can undo, right? Because it's so low level, so anything that is in the language you can actually fuck up. Uh, but yeah, so don't call me on anything I say, right? Uh, but, but C++ has a, an amazing keyword, which, which we have in Java, by the way. We have constant in Java. It doesn't do anything, but we have it, right? Uh, which is const, which I have no idea what it stands for. Constant, I think, or whatever. Constable. Uh, no idea, but const, right? And, and the idea behind const, at, or it's, it's a big story, of course, but the, what I like about const is the moment you define something const, like the blue line, here you define the, the parameter as, as a const id vec, uh, Right? At that moment, you cannot pass anything to this that isn't a const anymore, right? Don't look at me, don't look at me, but, uh, <laughs> right? Which is something very strange, right? It, it's as if it becomes a different, a different type, right? It has to be an immutable type. You have to pass it as an immutable type, otherwise it won't accept it, it won't compile even, right? Which is amazing, I think, right? Uh, we don't have that in Java, we don't care about that in Java. We have final, it doesn't do anything, but we have it, right? Uh, so this is another example, which I also love, the, the yellow one. 
Here we define the method itself as, as a const, right? Which means this method is a read-only method. It's not allowed to change anything in the body of the object it's called from, right? It won't compile if you try to do that, which is also is amazing, right? But like I said, C++ is full of loopholes, so you can come get around most of this shit, but it's, it's there at least. We don't have it at all in Java. We have the keyword. We have the keyword, right? But yeah, sure. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to skip this one because I'm running out of time. And, uh, but I like this picture, which I made. <laughs> just, uh, right? But basically, enums in Java. OK, so I'm going to go over this very quick. So this is an enum in C++, right? It's basically just an int. It's a glorified int with a name and like some kind of collection, which is the type of the enum itself, right? And this is the only thing you can do with it in C++. Just give it a number, right? And that's it. And the numbers can be duplicates. If you look at the example at the, at the top, they can be out of order. And that's it. That's the only thing you can do with it in, Java, in C++. Coincidentally, that's the only thing you cannot do with an enum in, uh, in Java, right? You can do amazing stuff. I try to write a very ugly enum, um, right? Implement interfaces, whatever, static method, abstract methods. You can do amazing stuff, but you cannot do what I just showed. You just give it a number. Right? You can define a member in the enum and give it a number, but you can't give the enum itself a number. Right? The enum itself is just it's, it's something weird. I'm not sure what it is, something in between. So yeah, and this give, gave me a lot of grief because this enum, for example, this, this is actually from the game. right? Um, and yeah, here it's not a problem, but where the enum is used is actually the problem. right? And if you try to do this kind of stuff in Java, it's very annoying. But I'm not going to go over it, like I said, because uh, I'm going to skip this one as well, which is, uh, yeah, I'm going to skip it, sorry. Yeah, let's talk about pointers, right? Uh, who doesn't love pointers? So, uh, right. So, as funny as this joke is, it's actually correct, but, uh, but yeah, so pointers, uh, we don't have them in Java, because um, I'm not entirely sure why, right? Because I have no idea. I actually asked uh, what James Gosling this question once, and he said, actually, we have pointers. References are pointers. I said, yeah, kind of. It's true. References are kind of pointers. But you cannot do the, the fancy stuff you want to do with pointers with them, like this. Um, anybody who doesn't know what a pointer is, actually, sorry. So like I said, I, keep, I just assume everybody knows, right? I'm just going to assume it. Uh, but basically, a pointer is just a location memory like reference, uh, but you can do more fancy stuff with it. Uh, and this is an example. Uh, so say you want to have a method that returns more than one return uh, value, right? So what do you do? In Java land, we create a wrapper object because we love them, right? Uh, but in other languages, which are more sane, you just give it like a couple of pointers as, as parameters and just reassign those pointers. And that, this is one of the things you cannot do in Java, right? You cannot give a reference to an int, for example, and say, OK, so this int which I'm re referring to has a new value. It will overwrite it and whatever, right? Uh, even with objects, you cannot do that. You can do it with members of objects, which, which is the idea behind the wrapper. And this is my simple solution. Let's go back. Just basically a lot of one element arrays, which is cheap and easy. And you just add this, which is also how you do it with point. You can also do this in C++, actually. And then life is easy. Life is good, right? Uh, another thing is... Um, Another thing that I really love about pointers is, like I said, you just refer to a place in memory, right? And you give it a certain type. For example, here, it's a matrix, a three by three matrix, right? But then you say, no, no, no. I know this matrix has integers or it has floats or whatever. Give me a float array. And the C++ is as simple as that. Just return that, a pointer to that type, right? To that uh, alum, um, member, right? And you know, OK, so that's a float array. And uh, in Java, we have to do like fancy stuff like this. This might not be the, the easiest solution I, I chose, but it was well, whatever. Again, I'm going to not uh, to, Yeah. And this is, this is like the funny thing uh, about uh, pointers in Java, to me at least, always, right? It's like, so we don't have pointers, right? So why do I have no pointer exception? <laughs> I mean, honestly, right? So uh, if anybody has the answer to that, you will win something. I'm not sure. And I, while I was doing, <laughs> I was searching for something, and I found this picture, and I thought, oh, man, you're so wrong, right? But OK. So, uh, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> so this is like the, uh, the second part of the, the show, so to speak. 
Uh, this is stuff that I really um, hate in C++. And uh, we, well, we, don't have, we don't have it in Java, but I still had to port it because I want to port a complete game, not a partial game that I like, right? So I had to do it, and it was just hell. And this is a valid Java code line, by the way. Uh, I'm not going to ask you what the answer is, but... Uh, so my number one uh, not favorite thing in uh, C++ is macros. Uh, and the person, yes, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Thank you. <laughs> um, so a macro is something very strange in C++ land. Um, a macro is basically, uh, how do I explain macros? I always have difficulty with this. It's like a piece of text you define. And before you compile, uh, the, the pre-compiler goes through your code and search and replaces that piece of text everywhere it is found, right? Uh, that's, that's what it is, uh, but the, yeah. So that's an example, right? So this macro, the square macro, right? I say, okay, so when I give it an x, then return, replace that with x times x, right? Which looks fine, right? So what if you give it five? What if x is five? What will the return value be, right? And I'm not gonna ask you, but I, I got it wrong the first time as well. This is a very simple example from Stack Overflow, by the way. It's like the number, why shouldn't you use macros? You will find this answer, right? What does this get compiled to? This, right? So. It becomes what? It becomes five times six, which isn't the square of anything, right? So uh, maybe maybe it is, I don't know, but uh, not as far as I remember, right? So macro is, is very something is something very strange, right? Um, and this is this is really the it's the funny picture I found that that most describes macros, right? So a macro it might look like a method, a function. It's not really a function. It might might look like a constant. It's not a constant. It might look like anything. It's not that. It's 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 no seriously. It's really not that. Right? Um, and to show you a couple of weird macros, so this macro, for example, it, so here you see, for example, the upper macro, right? Here we use destination, which is the input uh, parameter. And the first one is a float array, and the second one is a byte array. The same macro, it doesn't care. It doesn't care what the type is, right? I will just search and replace it. If it compiles, go, go ahead, have fun, right? Um, I'm gonna skip this one, but okay. Yeah, this one is actually more for fun, actually. It's not really, I mean, yeah. Hungarian notation, anybody know what Hungarian notation is? It's just, if you don't know what Hungarian notation is, don't worry about it. Just read this document. It's called How to Write on Unmaintainable Code. It's on GitHub. It's an amazing, amazing document. And uh, what they're saying there is actually 100% true. Hungarian notation is just a weird shit, right? Like I said, I'm just making fun of C++. It wasn't that bad, actually, to do Hungarian notation. You just get used to it, and that's it. But at the beginning, it's really unlogical. And at the end, it's still unlogical, but uh, illogical, illogical, I think, right? Um, yeah, but what I was, like I said, this was for fun. And it's wrong to make fun only of the other guys, right? So camel case, right? Which can also go way too far. And I found this amazing post, uh, which has since been removed. I'm not sure if it was because of me. I hope it is not because of me. But it's just amazing. So, uh, I, I don't know. It just rolls off the tongue, right? Um, camel case can also be evil. Spring, anybody from whatever, what's it called? Pivotal, right? You guys should... Uh, um, yeah, this was something that really gave me a lot of pain. Um, this is a very foreign concept to anybody, I think. I mean, I, I try to explain this to a lot of people, and I think I don't understand it much, but... Um, in the days of yore, I think, in, in C, in C, which is the thing before C++, somebody invented something called a union. And a union is a class, you can see it as a class, kind of, right? But the members, instead of being like, you know, when, when you have a class with members, you place them, you know, uh, next to each other in memory. No, in this case, you place them on top of each other in memory, right? Why? That's not important, right? But you can do that, right? So your class becomes as big as your largest member. So if your largest member is eight bytes, then it's eight bytes, right? And if you call a member that is two bytes, then you call the first two bytes of the eight bytes. Again, why is this important? Not important, right? Not important, right? This is a simple example. You know, if you have an IP, and then you can get like the specific class of the IP from the IP, right? Doesn't matter, doesn't matter. Like I said, this is very difficult to explain. I thought I removed this shitty slide, but uh, I'll put this slide in to explain unions better, but when I reach this slide, nobody understands anymore what I'm talking about, so I'm gonna skip it, kind of. Um, another picture I made, because this is really, uh, it's, it's really difficult uh, for me to talk about this. But the union within a union, right? Um, 
this was really the breaking point for me. Uh, there was, there's, there's actually not a lot, of, a lot of unions in the game, but this was one in the game. Uh, and if you look closely to the big red arrow, right, there's a type, <laughs> there's a pointer within your union of the same union type, right? And this was just, it was awful, god awful, right? To port this. It was just, uh, for somebody who doesn't understand it, right? Like I said, union is a concept from C. And what I just explained is actually not why you should use unions. It's a way to use unions, but it's not really the reason. This shitty slide shows why, but like I said, this takes too long to explain. Um, so yeah. And this, this single thing, right? These, what, 20 lines of code? Took me, I think, like a month or two to, to get right. And I know it's not right. I know that it's broken somewhere. I don't care, uh, right? I have bigger problems. I'll show you at the end what my bigger problems are, but, uh, but it's there. Um, I think I'm going to skip most of this part. This is just stuff in between, uh, right? It's not good. It's not bad. It's just stuff would be cool to have. Yeah, I'm going to skip this size of. It's an operator in C++ returns the size of bytes in, uh, of your object. Why is it important? It's not important at all, but when you work with OpenGL, it's, it's necessary. You can't get around it. OpenGL just requires to know how many bytes you're giving it, right? Um, you can make up a number, but it won't work. So it's, you just have to implement it. This is how I implement it. Not important. This is, how, this is actually implemented in Java, so if you do integer.bytes, something <coughs> that nobody does because you don't need it, and it's insanity, you'll actually get the size of an integer in bytes. So yeah, I just copied that, and I did that because we don't have size off in Java, right? Uh, destructors. Uh, again, picture I made, right? Um, most people, no. So, um, so this was, this, yeah. It's just the opposite of a constructor. Let's not go into details, right? It's just the opposite. Uh, so yeah, in other languages, you have to, uh, like, uh, what's it called? Uh, the reserve memory, when you can create something, and when you, have, when you finish, you have to destroy everything. You have to free the memory, right? That's what our destructors are for, right? You free everything in them. Java doesn't have that because the JVM does all that for us, or the garbage collector, or somebody else, right? Uh, but the problem is, of course, right? People use, misuse these for a lot of things, right? Like, and this is my favorite example here, for example, this destructor of an actor, which is a character, does, when you kill the actor, you stop the sound in the destructor, right? And I wasn't doing this because we don't have this concept in Java, so people were dying, but they were still talking, right? Which is weird when you think about it. And I was getting some overflow because I wasn't freeing some entities or whatever, right? So, yeah, it's, it's just, it's not difficult, but it's just, like I said, this is something in between. It might be nice to have it. And yeah, we, we think about it because we, somebody implemented autoclosable a couple of years ago. So, yeah, it's an idea to, uh, to have. We've all arguments, don't care about them for now. Uh, I'm not going to talk about this. I should actually remove that one. Um, yeah, I'm going to skip this one as well. Okay, so this is kind of a nice part, right? Some stuff I learned that I didn't think... I didn't think I didn't know, actually, but I didn't know, because if you don't know something, you don't know that you don't know it, right? Um, again, valid Java code does weird shit. Uh, don't have enough time, sorry, to, to go through this. Uh, um, yeah, so... Um, so like I said, so C++ you have pointers, right? You have references, right? But the only difference is uh, from Java, Java moves stuff around the memory for you, right? It defrags the memory, basically. C++, if you leave something in memory and you leave the game running for like two years, you will come back, it will be at the same exact location, right? That's just how it is. And because that's how it is, you can, you also have something called, uh, I don't know, what's it called? A data watch point, a data breakpoint or something. You can watch a specific address in memory and when it changes, you break. Right? Why is that important? Because game developers don't believe in getters and setters, which I completely agree with, actually. Getters and setters are the stupidest idea ever, right? Um, so everything is public, right? So if something is public and you want to see who's changing it, yeah, you look at the references, you see like 300 references. So we're not really going to set 300 breakpoints, right? You might. I did that once or twice, but it's not a good idea, right? Instead, you can do that. And I thought Java didn't have something like this, but we actually do. Um, this is from IntelliJ. Uh, I know it's in Eclipse, probably in NetBeans as well, right? It's called the field watch point in IntelliJ or something like that. This is how it looks, and you can set it up. The only problem, and it's not the only problem, it's a very fucking big problem, it's fucking slow. It's so slow that you won't believe, right? So when I run the game normally, like 60, 70 frames per second, 
I put a watch, a field break point or whatever it's called, right? And the game goes to, uh, down to like 0 0.1 frame per second. And I never, 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 never reach the, uh, the break point, right? Um, <laughs> this, uh, no, seriously, I get bored, right? I, I left it once running for like three hours at 100% CPU. I didn't reach the break point, so yeah. Uh, the, the upside, the small upside of this is um, when I use this, I sometimes use this for uh, enterprise applications, right? What we do in our day jobs. And it works. Yeah, thanks. Right? So there it works, right? And it's, it's all about iterations and, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm going to skip this one. Uh, yeah, I'm going to skip this one as well. I'm really running out of time, so I'm going to skip this. I love this one, so I'm not going to skip this one, right? Uh, this is like the, the thing I talked about at the beginning with uh, operator overloading and why is it important? Operator precedence, right? So, uh, so look at this, right? Bla1 and Bla2. Mathematically speaking, these operations should be exactly the same, right? It doesn't matter, right? Um, but when you look at the result, you get a different result, right? And there's even one better. And this was the actual bug I had where I discovered this phenomena, so to speak, right? Uh, this was the actual bug I had uh, because I don't remember why, but I rewrote Bla1 into Bla2, right? So instead of doing like plus, between brackets and then subtracting, I did like this, which is mathematically the same, okay, right? And I was getting very different results. I think I was supposed to get zero, but I was getting this one, which in 3D space, in something that's looping forever, it's, it's very different, right? And the reason behind that is because floating points in, in general, right, or these floating points at least, they do not have infinite precision. They have a very limited precision, right? And they have to like round up uh, everything after each operation. So the order you do operations in really matters. Right? When you add brackets, you divide B uh, through C first, right? and then the result gets multiplied by A. The same thing here. Right? So yeah, funny picture, because yeah, who doesn't uh, like funny pictures? But uh, to show you this example right, without even brackets, actually, because this is the same concept, actually. right? So yeah, just change the order you do the operation in. You get a different result. And OK, so this doesn't happen with every value, by the way. So this, this happens with specific values. I was getting these specific values in the game, so that's why I discovered it. And it's, it's really annoying to debug something like this. Uh, um, and I recently discovered, actually, Sonar, they added the rule to actually, with the moment you try to do something like this, they just tell you, this is, no, don't do this, right? Critical, then don't use floating for anything, right? You use big decimal or whatever, right? Uh, which is a bit a bad idea for a different reason, but not for this reason. Um, yeah. You can do this with doubles as well, but yeah. It's the same idea, right? It's something, yeah. I'm going to not rant about this. Um, I have, yeah, seven minutes. So uh, let's see, let's see. Right. So this is something else I discovered, which I thought I knew, but I didn't really know. And it's that conditional breakpoints are slow, right? Everybody thinks they know that, right? Some people don't believe that at all, but. You know, that's the same people that believe the Earth is flat or something, right? But you don't believe, you knew this, right? Or I knew this, right? But how slow, right? How slow is it really? And to me, it was so slow, actually. I made a benchmark, which I'm going to show you. But nowadays, I recompile my code with an if statement, and I put the condition I want to test of the conditional breakpoint. That's much faster for me than actually doing a conditional breakpoint. And again, this might be a bit more obvious in games, right, where you loop millions of times uh, doing some certain operation. And this is my benchmark that I did. Uh, I didn't really tweak the results here, so the other one I faked, but this one isn't really fake. Um, it's only, it's old. So if you look, if you skip the first line, because that's, uh, who cares about that? Uh, but it's, it's really on average like 180 times slower, right? Which is a fucking lot, right? And yeah, there is a reason for that, like, does it say that? Yeah. Because, yeah, the moment you do that, you switch to interpretive mode, which is shitty, right? So, but, yeah, it's easy. You know, when you're debugging something, just do a conditional breakpoint. But, yeah, when it, where it matters, it matters, right? Um, do I have time? Yeah, I kind of have time to talk about this. Okay, so this was a bug, a cool bug I had. A cool bug, right? Cool bug. Because I like bugs. Because nowadays, it's the only thing I do, solve bugs, right? It's like fix bugs. But this is one of the first bugs I had that was really a huge bug. Um, it was also one of the first times the game was actually, actually running. Uh, so I was so happy, right? If, if your game is running, imagine programming for a year with nothing to show for it. And then suddenly you get this, and you're so happy you don't believe you're alive or something like that, right? But I was getting the one on the left, right? And the one on the right is after I fixed it. 
Uh, but you know, I was running the C++ version. It was also giving me one on the right. So to the more observant of you, you can see that the one on the left is slightly blue, right? I didn't notice that because, like I said, I was happy, right? I honestly didn't notice that at all, at all, right? Uh, but after a while, I started noticing it, and I thought, okay, so this is something simple. I started debugging the code, debugging the code, debugging the code. This is basically this is an MPEG video. I load the MPEG video in a byte buffer, and then I pick a frame from the byte buffer, and then I convert it to some other format, and I show it on the screen. That's the only thing happening here. And this is not an MPEG player. You, something they wrote, and I rewrote in Java because, yeah, why not, right? And long story short, right, um, the reason this was happening is because I was using a byte buffer. And a byte buffer has some methods, duplicate, uh, slice, and third one, I don't remember. But duplicate, the, the obvious one, it's something like a clone, right? Uh, the moment you do a duplicate in a byte buffer, it forgets which, it duplicates everything except the endianness of your byte buffer, right? So I think this was low endian. I was doing a duplicate or a slice for one of the others, and it was switching back to the original uh, low endian, uh, little endian, right? So instead of RGBA, you were getting BARG, right? That's why it's so blue. Right? And it took me a long time to figure this out, and it took me a very long time after that trying to understand how nobody cares about this. Right? And then, yeah, I asked in one of those Ask the Architects se sessions uh, they do with the Java Architects. And yeah, one of the architects told me, yeah, sorry, it's a bug, in, and we're never going to fix it because of backwards compatibility. Right? So, yeah, that's, that's just amazing. Right? Uh, this is another bug I'm not going to talk about because it's a very long story, and I only have three minutes left. Uh, and I want to show you some cool stuff. But this is the, the message that, of the bug, right? It's like, uh, <laughs> it's like uh, yeah, it, 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 it was a bug, but it wasn't my code. It was really in the NVIDIA driver. So, so thank you, NVIDIA. Uh, you can ask me questions on Twitter and other stuff. And let me show you the demo. And you can ask me some, oh. So this is the first time I'm going to try to do the demo in full screen, because it really. Yeah, ooh, yeah. I can't see anything, so it's, it's already not working. <laughs> Hang on. OK, it's not working. Does anybody have any questions while we fix the demo? Why do I not have? Uh, OK, let's do this. Yes, much better. And I run it from here because I'm lazy. Anybody, any questions? OK, great. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like I said, I only have bugs, right? It's working, it's playable, even. And I can fix it so that I can play it till the end. But like I said, I don't care about it right now. Uh, the last time I, I, I showed the demo, somebody asked me, "Why do you did you choose the like the, the, the least difficult difficulty?" And the, re <laughs> and the actually the reason is because as you can see, the mouse isn't really captured, so it's really like this is the first one I can choose. That's that's why I'm just lazy. But for you guys, I'm gonna choose like the most difficult. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm I'm gonna die in like one minute and a half actually. So it's like. Uh, Nobody, any questions? Uh, how long did it take? Sorry? How long did it take? Um, sorry? I will repeat the question. How long did it take? Uh, right now, this, I'm working on it for like four years right now, right? And I think like 20 years more or something, right? <laughs> so, so I have no idea. Yes, Uh, do I access OpenGL directly from Java? I use an API. It's the only API I use, actually, uh, LWJGL, a low, lightweight Java gaming library. I use it to access OpenGL and OpenAL and some small part of OpenCL. Um, but it's, it's almost direct binding. It doesn't really do much for you. But it's amazing. You're forced. It has to be that, right? Or, or you... Nobody else? No questions? I hope it's, it's not too dark, actually, because that's actually the reason I'm showing it in full screen, because when I do it in a window, it looks way too dark. But this looks fine. Mars 
approach dark star with u 07063 passing through 38000 see i could skip this but i'm so proud of it roger dark star descend 2000 set speed contact ground on 26972 okay. oh. But that's that's actually not the reason I'm not skipping it. I'm not skipping it because skipping it breaks something. So that's the actual reason. Yeah, yeah. It's like. Shower, dark star on fire. Yeah, it's still way it's slightly too dark, but uh, much better than how it used to look. So. Time's up. Yeah, I'm gonna die in like a minute. I said, I think. So just bear with me. Yeah, I can skip this actually, but uh, the problem is I'm not going to be able to play like this, right? So I have to do this, of course. And no, 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 no. I'm doing it for the light. I'm not doing it for the gun, right? It's like uh, to show you. But I can kill this guy. Should I kill this guy? It's like uh, because you're not supposed to have a gun. This is actually funny because you're not supposed to have a gun at this point in the game. They didn't put like protection here that you can't kill this guy. So I can't really kill him, <laughs> right? So yeah, it doesn't, uh, and then the game crashes. Anyway, I'm, I'm out of time, so thank you very much. <laughs>